hello guys you're welcome back to the channel in today's video we are making a palazzo trouser actually we are making a two-piece set so but i'm starting with the trouser part and this video is a pattern drafting tutorial for a basic trouser and then we'll alter it to get a palazzo pattern guys i'm sure you're going to enjoy this in case you're new here what have you been doing? My name is Kemi Omorugbe. You're welcome to Kemi Freak. On this channel, I share sewing tutorials. In fact, I share holistic content about fashion designing. Vlogs, tutorials, fashion business talks, DIYs. Guys, I'm sure you want to be a part of this family. So just click on the subscribe button and don't forget to click on the notification bell so that you won't miss any tutorial that drops on this channel. Now, without further ado, let's get to work on the table. So here is the paper I'll be using. I have a trouser pattern tutorial on the channel already. In fact, trouser pattern and trouser sewing tutorial. But then I have learned a lot between then and now because that was about three years ago I posted that. So you need a very long paper. It depends on the length of trouser you're going for anyways. I will be drawing out my top margin. Before you start, you need to check out the tutorial on how to take body measurement for trouser. I'll put a link above and in the description box. That's a good place to get started. So now I'm going to be inputting my vertical measurements on this and just drawing out straight lines. Waist to hip measurement for this is 9 inches while for the crouch measurement is actually 11 inches, but I want this to be a little bit free along the crotch, crotch so I'm making use of 11.5. So go ahead and follow all the measurements as stated in that video. Take out your own measurements and that will just guide you on what to do. Next, I'll draw out the measurement from the waist to the knee. So and for this, we're working with 21 inches, and then I'm working with a full length of 44 inches. This is an extra long trouser, so I added about two inches extra to my usual measurement because you don't want this to be above the ankle because it's a palazzo trouser. It just looks nice when it's long and just below your heel. So now let's go ahead and put a name on all of this line. So this is the waist line, this is the hip line, this is the crotch line, and this is the knee line. This here is the ankle line, okay? So that way everything is clear and looking good. Now we'll just zoom in on this side because this is where we are working on first. And I'm just going to create another margin on this side. And this time it will also be around two to three inches wide, just so I have as much as I need here. Okay, so I have the margin at the side and at the top. I'm not going to be taking any measurement here or here. I'm just working from this line forward. First on the crotch line and on the hip line, I'll mark the hip circumference divided by four, and mine is 44 inches, so I marked 11. I also mark 11 right here, and we'll square it out. So we have this box here. Now let's come to the waist line. I'm going to input the waist circumference divided by four, and here we're working with the waist circumference of 34 inches. When you divide it by four, you have 8.5, right? Now I added one inch that allowance and that brings it to 9.5. So I'm just going to connect this using a curve to the hip line, like so. Now I'm going to mark the center of this waist measurement and mark out my dart position here. And I will square it downward and take the measurement for my dad this should be around five inches thereabouts this is our crotch line and i'm going to input our crotch 
extension right here i'm using my hip circumference divided by 20 for the front and hip circumference divided by 10 for the back crotch extension i'm making use of a hip circumference of 44 inches so i'm dividing it by 20 for the front and dividing it by 10 for the back crotch extension so when you divide it by 20 you get 2.2 so i'm just going to mark the crotch extension like this so now we want to create our crotch curve here and what i will do is come outward by one quarter of an inch on the hip line connect this crotch extension there and we'll blend it into the rest of this line okay so we have our crotch line like so next i will take the measurement for this from the crotch extension to this part of my pattern and i have 13.25 that's 13 one quarter i'll divide it into two and mark so i'm just going to mark the same measurement on the knee line and on the ankle line now connect all these markings using my ruler I'll connect it down so if you're making trouser you need a long ruler this one isn't long enough or you can still work with this now i'm going to take all my horizontal measurements that's the horizontal measurement for the nail and we'll spread it across this line and i'll do the same thing at the ankle i'm working with a knee circumference of 16 inches and once i divide it by two i got eight and i'll just spread the eight on the two sides of this line so we have four that way and four on the other side so before i move on to the ankle let me connect this now make use of the same measurement for the ankle so four on both sides so this is what i'll have if i was making a straight trouser or a basic trouser so i have this now i'm going to just use another pen and we can now create a pattern for the back now for the back pattern you want to raise the center back okay to go higher at the back for the back let's start it this way now we want to create another line this is for the center back and on this side we want it to be slightly slanted that's just what we're doing so i will mark one inch on the crotch line and i'll come to the waistline and i'll mark two inches inward then i'll pick up my ruler and connect this dot extend it this marker is so thick i will extend it above the waistline like so so from here i can then take my the measurement of the extension i'm creating for the back so this extension for the back i'm making use of 2.2 inches you can simply make use of your crotch extension it's just a way to estimate things guys nothing is set on stones here so i extended this by 2.2 inches and now i'm going to slant it towards our original waistline because both the front and the back must meet here right oh my god guys i actually forgot something please just ignore this let me go back to the front i'm sorry that i'm bringing you guys back and forth we need to make some modification on the front pattern okay we need to modify the waistline before i can move on to the back so but still note what i stated for the back okay sorry 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 guys at the center front lower the waistline by half an inch and at the side of the front piece raise it by half an inch connect this to one of the dart legs then i'll close up my dart gradually and smoothing my curve towards the other side so you have a slightly slanted waistline here okay i will extend this upward like so so this is just what i wanted to do before we get back to the back okay let's continue with our back continue with our red marker this marker is just so thick i think i'll have to change it 
yes we have a blue pen <laughs> so let's get back to treating the back pattern start by measuring one inch to the side here then two inches this way just to get this slanted line and like i mentioned earlier on extend the slant slanted line above the waistline that's the regular waistline before the modification by 2.2 inches 2 inches is okay 2.5 so it kind of changes with your size because the crotch extension will change with depending on the person's hip circumference right this is just a value for estimation you can use the same crotch extension you used here for this okay now let's move on to the crotch extension for the back the crotch extension for the front was the hip circumference divided by 20 and for the back I'm using the hip circumference divided by 10 which is basically two times what I used for the front so let me measure that and that would be 4.4 right yep and now just the way I moved outward here by one quarter of an inch I'll do the same thing here one quarter of an inch and we'll create a crutch curve for the back now let's come back to the waist after this extension like I was explaining before I got distracted I'm making use of 9.5 inches for my waist circumference here so at the side here because it has to meet with the front we are also raising it by half an inch so I'm going to take that 9.5 inches measurement and mark it here but make sure that it's half an inch above our first waistline okay before the modification of the front waistline and I'll just draw out the waistline for the back now I'm going to be extending this downward but before then you mark your hip circumference all over again now using the line for the center back as your reference so i'm marking the hip circumference divided by four and then i have 11 inches here so i'll connect this to this 11 inches it can be slightly curvy just depend on what you get So this way now I'm just going to measure half an inch on both sides of the knee line and also on both sides of the ankle line half an inch so I'll be connecting my dots now I'm connecting this to the knee line we'll have this now be wary of sharp corners you don't want any sharp corner here so just like i did here i'm going to either use a slight curve very slight curve nothing major or you can even make use of a straight line so now we have our front and back pattern represented here now that I'm done drafting the front and the back pattern, I'm going to transfer one of the patterns to another paper. I like to transfer the front because the major work I'll be doing now will be on the front, marking out the pocket pattern. And if you're going to use a zipper fly, this is the part where you do that. For this piece, I won't be making use of a zipper fly, rather we'll have a zip at the side. Also, I'll be marking out the band for both the front and the back. Now let's transfer the front pattern to another paper.
Now here is the front pattern once again. If you want to learn how to make different types of pants, you can enroll for our pants masterclass. We taught the wide leg palazzo, boots, cords, all the main types of female trouser you will learn from that class with several details, zipper fly fixing, band fixing, pocket fixing and all of that. We treated all of those things in details. For this palazzo trouser, I'm going to slash and spread, but I'm not going to spread so wide because I don't want it to be too wide. And I want to do this before cutting out the pattern for a purpose because I will need to even out the sides and make them straight. I don't want to start having to join another paper to this pattern. So let's cut out the hem. So the type of spreading I'll be doing, I'm just going to stop it at the crotch. Okay, you have the option of extending it to the hip line or to the waistline if you want here to be full as well, okay? You want your fullness to start from this part. But I've decided against that as I want mine to almost look like straight. So I'm just going to start my spreading from the crouch line all the way down. So once I get to the crouch line, I'll slash this to the side and here to the side. Because I don't want to cut out my pattern before slashing, so I'll need to pleat here just to make my pattern lay flat while I spread. Like I said, I don't want to spread too much. I just want a little spread, little spread. No, no, nothing elaborate. Okay, so I'll go ahead now and place another paper under this so that I can, you know, show you guys clearly. Now I have laid another piece of paper under. Before I spread, I'm just going to mark the center line so that I can measure how much spread I'm making. And then I'll shift this by whatever measurement I want, but I want it to be uniform on both sides. So I have 2.5 this way and another 2.5 that way. Now let's tape this on our paper. Let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, do this, do this. If you're enjoying this tutorial so far, kindly give this video a thumbs up. Thank you. Okay, now the reason I didn't cut out my paper, please cut out your paper. I don't mind this girl, she behaves like a Paco girl sometimes. So it's because I want to blend it onto here. I want to draw a straight line. I don't need this again because this is a palazzo. So like I mentioned, using the long ruler may just help much more here. Guys, I can't find my long ruler, so let's manage this one like this. So this is the reason why I didn't cut out my pattern first. I don't want to start tipping. But please do cut out your pattern if you deem it necessary. So we want to make here straight as well. We don't need the nail measurement again because a palazzo, this is our palazzo spread by just five inches here. Now you have the option to make it as wide as you need it to be. Just go ahead, you can make it very wide, almost looking like a skirt. The one we made in our trouser master class is way wider than this. And so the next thing I'll be doing, because this is not too wide, the curve at the hem of the trouser is not going to be an obvious one. But to, be, to guide you, you can take the measurement from where you slashed on one of the legs. This is 33, 1, 8, thereabouts, and you just do this. Now I can cut out my pattern. Now here is our pattern for the front. Now I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process for the back pattern. I'm talking about this spreading because it's basically the same. I won't be showing that on camera.
Now here I have the back pattern for this palazzo. So the reason I didn't mark out the back that is because I need some excesses at the back, even at the front actually. Maybe I'll just add additional half an inch to the measurement of the waistline at the front. But for the back, I decided to leave this one inch because I'll be adding an elastic band at the back and it needs some space, right? Yes, so that's why I didn't mark out the back that. But let me show you what to do if you are to mark out the back that. So remember that the dart for the front was perpendicular to the front waistline, right? So when you are making the dart for the back, you don't make it straight just like you have at the front here. You should have it slanted this way. So position anything that has a 90 degree angle here, any of your curves, and position it. Make sure that the straight line aligns with what you have at the back. Mark the dart position and then mark out your dart. Let's go ahead and even mark it, but we won't make use of it. I just want to show you guys. So mark this downward, measure the length of the dart you want. So mark out the width of your dart. So you have your dart looking this way, not in the same direction the front dart is. So now the next thing I'll be doing is to alter this pattern once again to create my band, pocket pattern on the front and all that. Let's quickly do that. Now we need a close-up look for this one. I'll start by closing up the front that. Close it up. It won't lay flat. Your pattern won't lay flat, but it is just temporary. Apart from the band that's... Well, it's temporary for the main trouser, but not temporary for the band. This is permanent for the band. So on this, I'm now going to measure. Take my measurement for the width of the band that I, ha I want. So I want my band to be 1.5 inches here. And let's connect our dots. And here I have my band. Now it's easy for this to get confusing. So I'll label my center center front and also the direction of the band so here we have our band pattern and i can now release this okay mm -hmm. so two things are involved here <laughs> and i go ahead and sew the dart for the front this tiny little dart when i transfer this to fabric or i can make it into a pleat otherwise if i'm not sewing this dart i will need to add an extra i'll measure take this measurement i'm not sure which one i'll do now that's why i'm just telling you guys the option so this part of the that just remains like mm, okay like three quarter of an inch so i can take that measurement and add it as an allowance here now if i'm making a regular trouser that i'm not putting elastic band at the waistline i don't need all of these excesses but for this i think i'll go ahead and add just three quarter of an inch at the side of this band, then I'll leave this. I won't sew a dart at the front. Now, another option for you to treat this dart, if you are spreading above your crotch line, okay, let's say you are spreading to the waistline, what you're going to do is to spread up to the dart, cover up the dart, so the dart closure will, will form part of your fullness, okay? Chances are that your palazzo will be way fuller than this if you spread up to this point and close up the dart. Just closing up the dart alone will give you so much volume for this hem fullness already i hope you understand what i mean yes so if you are spreading up to here you don't have to start doing any modification all you have to do is close up this dart and that opens up the leg of your palazzo and you can still go ahead and even completely remove the dart and just get your fullness by spreading from the waistline so now, after removing my band, I want to mark out the pockets for this. There are no hard and fast rule here, so I'm going to just measure. I'm going to take measurements of, mm, how wide do I want this to be? Let's say I want this pocket to be 1.5 inches wide. That's the pocket opening now. And the depth can be 6 inches, 6 inches work for me very well and for a lot of people so six inches and i'll create my pocket curve like so i 
and now we need a pocket facing and the main pocket so i want my pocket to get to okay the crotch line the crotch line so i'm positioning it from the dart you don't have to do this this is just me creating this pocket <laughs> basically there are no hard and fast through like i always say okay now we have this now I'll place this on another paper and transfer this entire part which is the pocket facing and then i'll transfer another piece which will be the inner part of the pocket i don't know if you understand but let's go ahead and do this let me show you what i mean now because i need two things i folded this paper into two i need two things from here so let's do our tracing i don't want to waste time placing fabric so i'll just apply as much pressure as i need to now i'll be cutting this out let's cut this out Okay, so I have two of these here. Now I'm going to convert one to the pocket facing and the other one to the main pocket piece. And when we're transferring to fabric, we'll add all the necessary allowances. So we need these two pieces for the pockets. Okay, so now after transferring the pocket pattern, I'll go ahead and cut this out, this part of this pattern. Now I'll go ahead and mark out and cut out the band for the back piece. Front and the back band has to be the same. Like I said, I'm ignoring the dart for the back because I didn't add any other extra allowance to this pattern. And that's just going to serve as one of the excesses that will allow my elastic band sit properly. So 1.5. Before I mark out the band, there's something I have observed from experience that here usually looks a bit sharp when you eventually cut out. So for that purpose, I'm going to make my own line slightly curvy, okay? I'll just make here slightly curvy, maybe by like one quarter or half an inch before I even mark out the band so that the band can be curvy as well. So I'm actually experimenting with this. Um, I'll be eager to see how this works. So let's do this 1.5. This is just slightly more than a quarter of an inch. Experiment time. Now here are our pattern pieces. I hope you followed every step I took that brought us to this point. And don't forget to label this. I haven't done that. Thank you guys for watching so far. I hope you have enjoyed watching this. Guys, I did put in my best, didn't I? I believe I deserve a thumbs up, right? Please just click on the thumbs up button there so that YouTube can recommend this video to other people. And also drop your comment in the comment section. Subscribe if you haven't. Let's see each other in the next video. Don't go anywhere. If it's ready, it's going to be on the end screen somewhere here. So check it out. Just click on it and that will take you to the sewing part of this tutorial. Thank you once again for watching. See you soon, okay?